It's in its stable form, okay? So that's in its stable form. So if we have an electron with a different number of, if we have a, an element with a different number of electrons, that's called an ion, okay? So an ion is a different number of electrons. So for example, carbon should have, okay, should have six electrons because the atomic number uh, is six. Now, if it has five, then it's an ion. If it has seven, it's an ion. So an ion is a different number of electrons. Now, an isotope is a different number of neutrons, okay? Now, carbon, once again, we'll use carbon as an example. The mass number was 12, the atomic number was six, so it has six neutrons. Now, if it has, okay, uh, if it has a different number of neutrons, if it has five or it has seven or any other, anything besides six, then it's an isotope. Now, this is the most missed question on your next test, so really kind of hone in here and make sure you've got this. How do we do a symbol for an isotope, all right? Well, we write the chemical symbol of the element, so this is going to be an isotope of carbon, okay? So we put carbon there. The atomic number goes on the bottom. This is to the left of the element. So the atomic number is on the bottom. Carbon is the atomic number is six, so it would always be six. Now, if the mass number, if the mass number for, for carbon was regular, okay, so, so the regular number for carbon, once again, the mass number for carbon is 12. We can find that from the periodic table. So if I put a 12 there, then it wouldn't be an isotope because the mass number is a number of protons plus neutrons, okay? So that would be regular, but anything other than 12 is going to be an isotope. So if we have one more neutron than we're supposed to, oh, then that would be the, the isotope. We call that carbon-13, but we would write the mass number on the top and the atomic number on the bottom. Oh, no, this is kind of interesting. So it should be 12, but if it's 14, then we have two more neutrons you were supposed to have. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Well, that's actually carbon-14 that we use for radioactive dating. Okay, so once again, the symbol for an isotope is really easy. The atomic number stays the same, okay, but the different number of neutrons is represented in the, in the mass number. All right, so once again, uh, uh, that's a symbol for an isotope. Now, once again, we're going pretty fast on this, so it's kind of nice. You can replay this, uh, watch it again, uh, go back over it. But uh, be sure all the things we're giving you, you're getting the, you're getting the pattern. Uh, you'll be tested over just about everything that we talk about uh, on these, these videos. So a lot of key information. Now, if we have a positively charged ion, and once again, an ion is a different number of electrons. Okay. So if it's an if it's an ion, like let's say let's say that it's, that it's calcium, and we put a plus here. All right. If it's a positive charge. Since that plus charge means that it is missing an electron, because remember, all the electrons have a negative charge. So this plus means that it's minus one electron, okay? If it was Ca minus, okay, then it would have, then it would be plus one electron, because every electron is a negative charge, okay? So if this was a negative two, then it would be plus two electrons, okay? So, once again, we look at an ion. Now, this is kind of nice because a positively charged ion is called a cation, okay? And later on, we get the word cathode from this, but it works pretty good because, now, some of these things are kind of silly, so if they work for you, great. If not, make up your own. But the way I always remember this is cats have paws. So, a positively charged ion, that's a cation because cats have paws, all right? A negatively charged ion, okay, is called an anion, okay? And later on, we get the word anode, like on a battery, we have the cathode, the positive side, and the, and the anode, which is the negative side. So once again, if we're looking at this, okay? So I said here is, here is Ca plus, okay? So it is a positively charged ion, so that would be a, a cation, okay? And here is a negatively charged, okay? That would be your cation, and this would be your anion. All right. Okay. Now, let's talk about something else here. Let's stop for a second and let's talk about the let's talk about the atomic mass of electrons, neutrons, and protons. Because what happens is is electrons are extremely small, but they travel at the speed of light. So, electrons seem to be the most important thing we're talking about. But then we have the protons and the neutrons. So, let me give you this analogy, okay? Uh, this is a good comparison I'll allow you to use on your test. So we're going to compare the sizes of these. 
Protons and neutrons are almost the same size. If a proton and a neutron were the size of a basketball, okay, if a proton and a neutron were the size of the basketball, then an electron would be the size of a ball on a ballpoint pen. The little bitty tip on a ballpoint pen that you can barely see, that's how big an electron would be if we could see it if protons and neutrons were the size of a basketball. So really what we're looking at is electrons are so small that you don't even see the weight. So for example, if I took this disk and I went and I weighed this disk, and I found out this desk weighed so many pounds or so many, so many kilograms or, 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 or however we wanted to measure it. And I put a speck of dust on there. And I went in there and I reweighed this disc. The speck of dust wouldn't even show. That's the way the electrons are. If, I take, if this was the neutrons and protons in a nucleus, okay, and I weighed it, and then I came over and I put the electrons on there, the electrons are so small that they wouldn't even measure in the mass. That's why the atomic mass number only represents the neutrons and the protons. So once again, we look at the atomic mass, uh, electrons are extremely small. The thing is, they're so important because they travel at the speed of light, and they travel around the nucleus, okay, they keep the neutrons and the protons. Here's this, if we were to see this under, under the, the microscope, what we would see is not just this nice little deal like this, but the electrons travel so fast our eyes can't track them. That's why we begin to see this, this structure. That's why we early scientists thought that was the shape that was the shape of an atom because the electrons traveled so fast. And because they're traveling at the speed of light, 186,000 feet per second, they keep that nucleus locked in. They keep those neutrons and those protons in there so they can't come out. So the, neutron, the electrons are so important, but they're so small in size. Okay? So make sure you understand that even though the electrons are important, they're so, they're so insignificant in terms of weight that they just don't hardly really weigh a thing. Okay. So now let's talk about the isotope